let's speak visualization for, for a second here. Yeah. Is, is visualization, because I often hear people talk about, you know, do a vision, uh, a vision board, write these things down. How necessary is it to spend a part of your day visualizing exactly what it is that you want? And how much time during your day should you spend visualizing? Well, let's go back to our little script metaphor. That's why it's important to do it. That's the importance. You've got to visualize this new way of being, this new reality, because your subconscious mind wants to create. Well, let's 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 back up. When I visualize something I don't have, like I visualize I'm in Hawaii, but I'm in you're in Vancouver, you said, right? Excuse me? Where you live again? No, oh, Westchester, New York City. Westchester, New York. Okay, so you're in Westchester, New York, and you're visualizing being in Hawaii on vacation. Mm -hmm. You've never been to Hawaii, you want to go to Hawaii, and that's your visualization. Now, if I keep visualizing I'm in Hawaii, which is up here, my vision, down here, Westchester, New York, what happens is there's this, what we call cognitive dissonance or structural tension in the brain. Your brain's kind of saying, hey, dummy, you're in Westchester. Quit visualizing being, you're not there. And you're saying, no, I am there. And what happens, the brain eventually goes, if we're going to get this guy to stop doing this, we better figure out how to get him to Hawaii because he's not stopping. So we got to get him to Hawaii so we can get rid of this tension. It's like your wife saying, we need to buy a new car. We need to buy a new car. We need to buy a new car. Well, to get her, to get her off your butt, you either have to get a new car or convince her it's not going to happen. So she stops asking. So as long as you keep visualizing, you're telling the universe, law of attraction, and you're telling your subconscious mind, come up with creative ideas to make this happen. And then the resolution occurs, you get completion, achievement, fulfillment, relaxation of that tension. Advertisers do this to you all the time. Imagine yourself behind the wheels of a Mercedes, you know, imagine yourself at the, you know, Atlantis or Club Med or whatever. And so they're constantly getting you to imagine having something you don't have. And if they can do it long enough, eventually you want it. So you'll go spend the money to get it, mm -hmm. you know? So we're going to use the same principle, which works. It's a psychological principle for ourselves instead of against ourselves. And so that, that repetition and that consistency is required for the subconscious mind to start going, okay, let's come up with solutions. Mm -hmm. Let's start noticing things in the environment that will help us to achieve this goal. It's one of the things that happens. The back of your brainstem, you have something called a reticular activating system. It's, it's operating right now. And right now, it's telling, you're getting signals coming in through your eyes, coming in through your ears, coming in through your butt sitting on the chair. You can feel your butt if I focus on it. You can, you know, hear the sounds in the room, whatever. Now, you're getting signals from a part of your body you're not paying attention to because it's being filtered out by the reticular system. So you and everyone is watching. What I want you to do is just become aware of what you're feeling in your right foot. And can you do that? And then become aware of what you're feeling in your left hand. And you can feel that. So we can place our awareness at will wherever we want. And when we visualize what we want, it starts opening up this reticular system to let in resources, ideas, and um, opportunities, people, money, books, podcasts, YouTube videos that we would have normally skimmed over and never seen. Mm -hmm. So so my story in The Secret is about a $100,000 goal that I set. And I started seeing opportunities to promote my book, which would have produced 100,000. Reader's Digest in my grandmother's bathroom with 8 million readers every week. A National Enquirer, 12 million readers a week. Well, if I can get in the National Enquirer, if I can get in the reader. Never had those thoughts before. I didn't need them. But as soon as I started visualizing that, the reticular system opened up and opportunities started to occur. And then we have to obviously act. So, yes, it's worth the effort. It does work. And here's another thing about visualization. Only 15% of people are what are called eidetic visualizers. That's a psychological term for people when they close their eyes, they get, you know, 5G, high def, you know, images. Uh, that's, the, that's the minority. You know, that's the what, Steven what, what percentage of the people? About 15%. Okay. Okay. And that's great. And they tend to be movie producers and artists and they make the, you know, the videos and they do the, you know, the, they design book covers and all that good stuff. Most of us, when we close our eyes and I say, get an image of like, you know, the car you'd like to drive, 
we kind of know it's a Mercedes. We can kind of see the wind, you know, the, 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 the steering wheel. We know there's that little, you know, three pointed logo on it. And I could say, open the glove compartment, tell me what's in there. And you could do it and you'd say, well, it's a banana. You kind of know it's a banana, but you don't really see it's a banana. That's still visualization. Just intentionally thinking the thought with the intention of having an image come, even if you don't fully see it, that's still visualization. Now, this is why vision boards are valuable, whether it's a vision board that's, that's flat and, you know, stay, what's what I want, pictures, or whether it's a vision board, you can now go to mindmovies.com and you can get a, a vision board that's actually a video. You, get, you create it yourself with videos they have that are stock. And so you want to be a producer, you see yourself on a movie set, whatever. And you put music to it and make affirmations. So when I'm looking at that day after day after day, that's starting to put that image in my mind. And then I can close my eyes and visualize it. It gets easier and easier to visualize uh, if you do that. So I have the whole back door of my office. You know, If I'm exiting my office, I'm sitting in top of the door to the bottom of the door is all images of things I want in my life. So that's my vision board. Every time I go out of my office, I stop and look at that for a minute. And it reminds me. And so, I want, you know, John Asaraf has what he calls his extraordinary life vision book. And every image of anything he wants, the watch he wants to own, the car he wants to own, the vacations he'd like to take, the number of people he'd like to have in his, you know, um, coaching program, whatever, it's all in there. And he just flips from every morning without fail, every morning. And then he closes his eyes and he visualizes, says his affirmation, feels the feelings of it. This is what we have to do. John makes about 15 million a month passive income. It's working for him. <laughs> <laughs> is, is there a specific time of day that this works best? Should I do this the minute that I wake up before I get out of bed? Is it best to do it at night? Should I take some time out during the day to meditate? When, when do you find is the best time to visualize? Or, or can I be just sitting at my desk working and you know, having these images all around my office. Yes. Whenever I turn to the right or the left, I'm seeing exactly what it is that I want. And subconsciously, it's feeding that, you know, th these images are going to one day manifest themselves physically. Well, the answer is yes, 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 and yes. Now, what I mean by that is, I recommend people, you get up in the morning, usually you have to go to the, you know, pee, go to the bathroom, whatever. So now when you come back, sit down, and I recommend everyone meditate for 20 minutes. And if you start with three minutes, but meditation is, is critical to success. So meditation you to, for you, do, do you still meditate to this day? Absolutely. Why would I stop? Do you, do you all, really, you're 76. You've had plenty of success, more success than most. You still feel the need, I want to meditate, I still want to bring all of this financial wealth, health into my life. Well, there's two purposes of meditation. What? Meditation is to, to de-stress yourself, uh -huh. is to tap into inner guidance, higher power, God, universe, intelligence, source energy, however you want to call that. And if I don't do that, someone once said, prayer is asking for what you want, meditating is being open to hear the answer. So the reality is, if you don't have a time of stillness in your life, you can't have creative ideas coming, intuition, inspired ideas, you know, and then they can show up at other times, like you're driving and your mind's kind of free, you know, but the point being that you want to create a space to meditate. And there, there are tons of different forms of meditation. You go online, just type in meditation, go to YouTube, there's lots of meditations that you can just listen to. But the main thing is, after you meditate, then visualize. Then do your affirmation visit. Because what happens in meditation, you drop into what's called the quantum field. The quantum field is the field of all thought around the earth. In other words, thought is an energy. So when I, when, right now I'm sending you a thought, it's going through the airwaves by satellite, right? So thought travels through air. This is why psychics can pick up what someone's thinking halfway across the country. We know that. There's all kinds of research to prove that. So your thoughts are actually sending out vibration to attract things to you and it's also letting your subconscious know what it is you want to create so it gets its its guide it, what you want to call it, its marching orders to come up with solutions it opens up that reticular system so meditation critical uh, then do your affirmations visualize and then do a gratitude exercise be grateful whether it's a rampage of appreciation where you just look at everything for 
two or three minutes and say, I appreciate the ring lights that are lighting me up. I appreciate, you know, Steve Jobs for creating my Apple computer. I appreciate you for giving me the opportunity to share my ideas. I appreciate the people who made my Yeti mic. I see you have one too. You know, whatever. The reality is I've got a lot to be grateful for. And when you're in a gratitude, you get more to be grateful for. It comes to you. So that would be, so I, I teach what's called the hour of power, Sean, 20 minutes of meditation, visualization, affirmations, 20 minutes of reading, reading something uplifting and inspiring to get you into a positive space, or it can be useful, like how to use LinkedIn to build your business, whatever. And then 20 minutes of exercise minimum. Some people exercise more. I think more is better, but 20 minutes minimum doing high intensity interval training or, you know, your treadmill, bicycle, run, run around the block, you know, whatever it is, lift weights. When you do that, you're energizing your body. You're creating this, all the subconscious activation that we wanted. You're tapping into higher energy and you're informing your mind with higher order thoughts than mostly what we do. Most people get up, turn on the TV, watch all the negative news, and that's how they start their day. I recommend doing the same thing again, not all that, but your visualization and your affirmations right before you go to bed. Now, if you're about to make love, you know, go do that. But normally, <laughs> you know, normally take a few minutes and just do your visualization, your affirmation. You're, you're telling your subconscious mind, focus on creating this tonight. I want all of your effort during the night to be thinking about how to make this happen. And you're giving an instruction. And research shows that what you think about the last 30 to 40 minutes before you go to sleep, your brain will focus on six times more than everything else that happened during the day, except for emotionally traumatic things like your dog, you know, almost got hit by a car, that kind of thing. It, 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 does the universe, because we ask the universe, show me a sign, show me a sign. Does the universe show us signs? And how can we distinguish if the universe is showing us a sign that this is what I've been asking for, because some many times it doesn't come like that flashing light, like, look, you should right. be doing X. Right. Well, that's why meditation is so valuable because sometimes it comes as a whisper. Sometimes it comes a song you hear on the radio on the way to work. Sometimes it comes as a TV show you're watching, or sometimes it comes that seven people send you the same email. You know, whatever it is, there's usually something there that tells you like at least five times in the last month, this thing called earthing, which means getting out and standing on the earth with your bare feet, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's the cement, stone, grass, dirt, sand, water, literally you're grounding your energy and you're charging your body with energy. Most of us are wearing so rubber soled shoes today, especially if they're running shoes, which are all the big rage this day. Mm -hmm. So what happens is you're insulated from the earth. When you're in your car, your rubber tires are insulating you from the earth. When you're in your house, you're insulated from the earth. And so five different things came into my life in about a week. Maria Shriver has a newsletter. My wife reads me this article about earthing. I'm, I'm skipping around on YouTube and there's a thing about earthing. You know, and all of a sudden I'm going like, whoa, well, wow. So I'm being hit on the head. You know, when chicken soup for the soul, how did that happen? At least 30 people over the course of 30 days said, you ought to write a book about these stories. My daughter needs to read them. My, my staff needs to read them. It was like, boom, boom, boom. And so I went, okay, I guess I'm supposed to put all these stories in a book, you know? And, um, and then the other thing you can do, you can test yourself. When you get an inspiration to act, does it give you goosebumps? Does it make you feel expanded? Or does it make you contract? Anything that's for your highest good will make you feel expanded. You'll breathe deeper. You'll get goosebumps, hairs on the back of your chest. We all have something that tells us, you know, this is like inspired. For me, I get goosebumps. For someone else, you know, it's a hair on the back or it's a tingly feeling in their chest. But if you feel shut down, if you feel contracted, if it brings fear in, you have to explore it. Sometimes the fear is in reaction to something you need to do. But normally if it's a contraction, we'd say kind of move away from it. And you can ultimately learn Something I teach in my seminars is muscle testing. You put your arm out to the side and you have someone push down on the arm. You resist, find out what your normal strength is. And then you then you think of like doing one thing, like, you know, I'm going to go and I'm going to write that book. The arm goes weak. You go, no, I'm going to write a podcast. I'm going to do a podcast. So I'm stay strong. So the podcast wins, you know. So there's ways to test your body that you can learn over time. That's why I said, you know, you can't learn everything you need to know in one podcast. That's why week-long workshops and courses and you know things like that are valuable. But I think that anything's possible. Pay attention to the signs. And um, 
you know, there's the, the, I would say this too. One of the things that the people in the law of attraction teach, including me, but all the high level teachers that teach this, is that joy is your feedback system. If you're experiencing joy, it's telling you you're on course toward the fulfillment of your purpose. We each have a life purpose. You know, my purpose is to inspire and empower people to live their highest vision in the context of love and joy. And I hope what I've done today is do that for the people who are watching this. If I do something and I'm not feeling joy, then I'm thinking, I need to delegate this to one of my staff. This is not, I'm not supposed to do this. This deal is not for me. It's, it's making me feel whatever I don't want to feel. But when I'm going like, I'm loving this, man. This is really fun. Like I started working with a private coaching client uh, recently who had a very checkered past. And um, he saw the secret, kind of saw God. Now he's turned his life around. And he's paying me a really good sum of money to work with him. And we're about to run out of his money and I'm going to give him a few extra sessions because I'm just enjoying it too much. So it's it's on purpose for me to keep working with him because that joy tells me it is. Now, if I was starting to resent him, then that would tell me I'm done, you know, but I'm not. And so when I'm writing my book, when I'm doing this with you, when I'm doing a seminar, when I'm doing a podcast, when I'm running one of our coaching courses, I'm doing my train the trainer online or train the trainer live programs, then I'm happy. And so that tells me keep doing it. My wife keeps saying, you're 76, why don't you retire? And I go, do what? Golf's fun, but it's not as much joy as this, you know? So I'd rather do this than that. So, um, you know, as long as I keep having enjoyment, I'm gonna keep doing it. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.